Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Ryan Jackson here. For a long time, I've been trying to figure out a way to address Article 100 on YouTube because I, I think it's one of the most important articles in the code, and, and anybody that's used the code for any length of time would, would have to agree with that, whether they like it or not. Uh, definitions aren't the funnest thing in the world to talk about or to listen to somebody talk about, but they're critical. So what I'm going to do is what I'm going to call 100 days of Article 100. We're going to go through Article 100 from A right through Z. Uh, I think you, actually. <laughs> so that's the idea. We're going to cover everything in Article 100, and I'm going to do it in very short little bite-sized clips. So I'm going to do uh, pretty much one definition per video other than some of the definitions which really warrant multiple definitions in one video. When we talk about damp location, wet location, and dry location, uh, it's not going to make any sense to do three different videos because to really understand any of the three, you have to understand all three and, and compare them and contrast them. So that's the idea. We're going to do 100 days of Article 100 starting today with the introduction to Article 100. We'll talk about the scope, how it works, and perhaps most importantly, how it's going to work in the 2023 version of the NEC. I know it's only July of 2021, uh, but we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to be under the 2023 code, so we got to uh, be ready for it. So let's get started. 100 days of Article 100 starts now. So the definitions. When we read the scope of Article 100, it says Article 100 does not contain commonly defined terms unless they have a different definition than would be found in a typical dictionary. Okay, so this is something that's important to know. Uh, if we're looking for the definition of damage, for example, as it relates to what's subject to physical damage, we're not going to find that definition because damage is what it is. We don't need to reinvent the definition. Uh, we would just go to a typical Webster's Collegiate uh, Dictionary to find out the definition. But for something like the word exposed, we have a different definition for exposed in the NEC than we would have in the rest of the world. Uh, looking at the picture here, Wiring above a suspended ceiling is exposed in the NEC. Uh, if we're just talking to a regular person on the street and we ask them if something they cannot see is exposed, the answer would probably be no. So in the NEC, we have a different definition of exposed than we do in the rest of the world, and that's why we define the term exposed. Terms used in more than one article of the code are supposed to be defined in Article 100. So that's the way Article 100 works. Not every definition in the NEC is found in Article 100. Only the definitions that are used in more than one article are found in Article 100. At least that's the way it's supposed to work. And it's a bit of a problem, and they're going to fix it in the 2023 code. But in the 2020 code, they added the language here in the underlined yellow that says definitions are also found in the dot two sections of some articles. This can get really frustrating. So if I'm looking uh, for the definition of the word bundled, for example, that's something that you're going to find in Article 520 and it's only to be used in Article 520. But if you're looking at, uh, for the definition of, I don't know, PVC conduit, rigid polyvinyl chloride conduit, we use that term throughout the code, obviously, and it really should be defined in Article 100, but it's not. It's found in 352.2. So it's a little bit frustrating right now in the 2020 and previous versions of the code, and again, they're gonna change this all up in the 2023, but for right now, just know that if we use terms in more than one article, we define it in Article 100 for the most part. If we only use the term in one article, then we define it in that article. Part 1 of Article 100 contains uh, the definitions of terms that are used throughout the code. Part 2 is for terms that are used only above 1,000 volts, and there's only about six or seven of them. There's very few uh, that apply specifically to over a 1,000 volt installation. And then part 3 
contains the definitions for hazardous or classified locations. What we're looking at here in the picture is an explosion-proof telephone. If you're looking for the definition of explosion-proof, that is in Article 100, but it's in Part 3 of Article 100. That's where all of our hazardous location stuff, if you're looking for the definitions of intrinsically safe or explosion-proof, dust ignition-proof, things like that, uh, you'll want to find yourself in Part 3 of Article 100. What the future holds. I've already mentioned the 2023 code a couple of times already, and the reason for that is that this is all going to change, uh, almost certainly. Now, it's July of 2021 right now, uh, and certainly the 2023 is not set and done. We're, we're barely starting the 2023 process. But there's a document that we use in the NEC called the Style Manual, and the Style Manual tells us basically how to write code, how the code book should work, and what terms should be used and should not be used, it tells us how the code is constructed. Well, they made a change in the latest version of the style manual to say that every definition should be in Article 100. And I have mixed feelings about that. I don't know if that makes the code a more user-friendly document or if it makes it less user-friendly. I think there's good arguments on both sides. So in the 2023 version of the code, all 820 definitions, and yes, there are 820 definitions, they'll all be in Article 100 for the 2023 edition of the NEC, uh, unless something very unexpected happens. Because it's in the style manual, and the style manual is already published, and it's, it's, been, uh, it's been accepted by the Standards Council, I, I think this ship has sailed. I, I think this is definitely going to happen. So in the 2023 code, Article 100 will not have any parts. It'll just be A through Z definitions. There won't be any parts. There won't be above 1,000 volts, less than 1,000 volts. There won't be a part three for hazardous locations. It'll just have everything in Article 100. And here's what it'll look like. So right now, <clears throat> excuse me, right now, if you want to know the definition of child care facility, you would go to Article 406 because that's the only place we use that term. In 406.12 for tamper resistant receptacles, it says that receptacles in child care facilities have to be listed as tamper resistant. So we need to know what a child care facility is, but I only need to know that if I'm dealing with tamper resistant receptacles. So I would find the definition in 406. Well, in the 2023, it's all going to be in Article 100. And they're also going to have a little reference if it only applies to one article. So when you read the 2023 code, it'll say Article 100 definitions, child care facility, and you'll have 406 written in parentheses. And that will mean that it's only to be used in Article 406. We also have a parenthetical reference, CMP dash, and then a number 1 through uh, 18 or 19, depending on which year. And what that number is, is that's the code making panel that has purview over the definition. It doesn't mean anything to 99% of the code users. Uh, to the 1% that are on the code making panels or make proposals and need to figure out, you know, how to, how to handle it in the code development process, that's all that number is. So when you see CMP-2 or CMP-5 or whatever, you can completely ignore it if you're a code user. If you're somebody that's on a panel, then obviously you'll need to know that information. But there you go. That's how Article 100 works. So with that said, we are going to start doing our series of Article 100, starting with the first definition, which is accessible. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.